question. Hello, my dear students. I'm going to go back and revisit mixtures, specifically that mixture of boric acid. You can do this experiment at home, but don't. That can be bought as roach proof. And methanol, which is sometimes sold as a gas treatment and is used in chafing dishes, sold in restaurant supply stores because it's a very simple one carbon alcohol that burns very cleanly to carbon dioxide and water and doesn't impart any food to the taste it's heating up. I mean, there aren't a lot of things you can burn to heat up food that don't affect the taste. You could never put, for example, gasoline or something underneath there or kerosene. It would leave a terrible smell in your food. But you saw me take the methanol and make green fire, beautiful green fire. In fact, I helped a student of mine propose once when he brought me some logs to soak in green because his girlfriend's favorite color was green. And he made a green campfire on a beach down by the river and the green flames, I guess, did the trick because he proposed and she said yes. But this is a very common laboratory experiment and it demonstrates important chemical principles. The boric acid has the, com has the element boron in it. Here, element number five in our periodic table. And it has five electrons. And those electrons get elevated to higher energy levels in the presence of the heat and flame. And when they decay back to their ground state, they emit a very specific wavelength of light because those transitions, those energy transitions they make are quantized. They're very specific and they make a very specific energy transition corresponding to the frequency more correctly, but the wavelength of green light. And it's an important teaching principle for the quantum model of the atom and what happens when you excite electrons. And it's cool, green fire. Who wouldn't like green fire? And I'm lighting myself on fire. What's up with that? Let me tell you what happened when a kindergarten teacher in Texas wanted to show her students green fire. And she obviously hadn't had my chemistry class or a good chemistry background. This kindergarten teacher in Texas was doing this demonstration and injured 12 of her children. Nine of them went to the hospital with burns. One of them had to spend the night. She caught all her students on fire. And I'm doing some things you didn't notice, but I wanna tell you what they are just so you start paying attention and noticing I know what I'm doing and you need to know what you're doing. When I mix that boric acid and methanol, I use a small bottle of methanol. I poured a small quantity out of it, of it out into a watch dish. I put on my safety glasses, I put on my lab coat, and I took the rest of the methanol and I moved it far away from the ignition source. And then when I lit it on fire, yes, you shouldn't do this, and I no longer have any hair on my knuckles. I was holding my hand up. Methanol doesn't burn super hot compared to some other things, and the heat is rising. I didn't hold my finger like this. I held it like this, and I quickly blew it out. I didn't splash a lot of it in there. I just got a little bit of it. And I honestly don't recommend this, and this is probably not a valid science demonstration, but if I were just to light up my boric acid solution there, you can see two things. I'm doing it in a pan. I have something to extinguish the flames with. Some gun on the outside of it. I have a fire extinguisher here. You actually don't want to be too close to your fire extinguisher. This isn't too close for the small quantity I have. I have another fire extinguisher back there. And I don't have anyone closer than two rows to me. 
so that the alcohol, the tiny amount, I only have like five mils out, won't splash. She obviously took a whole bottle of it, lit it, and methanol is not as safe as people think. It actually has a very fairly high vapor pressure, ignites easily, and is actually a bit more dangerous than people give it credit for. And she lit something up that caught the container on fire. The container exploded and spewed burning methanol on all of her students. Can you imagine how that kindergarten teacher feels? I will put a link to this in our, in our, um, in our classroom stream, but 12 children were injured in a flash fire from a science experiment at the Yellow School at Memorial Drive Presbyterian Church in Houston. And six of the children had to go to the hospital with burns. And here's what's terrible, is that the children, the injured children were all three and four years old. You know, how can they ever even trust a science teacher again after an experience like that? So you have to know what you're doing. You have to follow instructions. And it is probably not cool to repeat some of these experiments at home unless you use the same precautions we're using in lab. So let's proceed. We've got two labs we want to do this week and get over with where we're separating mixtures. One, we're gonna separate iron and cereal, and two, and you should have done this experiment a long time ago, but we are going to look at paper chromatography and separating different pigments in ink and identifying you know, different inks based on their chromatographic pattern, that's called a chromatogram, and identifying the different components by their RF. That's a value where the distance migrated is relative to the solvent front, RF, relative to the front value. So stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.